basically eight hours not to have it at all, is what I would say from my perspective. I also well, think if we really wanted Facebook, we could all get it. Even if, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I get all of my messages sent to my email, right? So I can read pages and pages of personal messages <laughs> and, at the same time if I wanted to. And, and this day they can get Facebook from their Blackberry, so you don't know their Facebook thing. They just, oh, well, texting from boyfriend, whatever. What are some of your comments or arguments about the, what well, I'm afraid, I consider myself middle-aged here. I'm not over 50. I'm not in college, okay? Yeah. I struggle because right now I'm selling a computer to the senior citizens, okay? And they're asking me the question, why would I want to email? I just want to pick up the phone and call somebody. What's happening with today's society where they don't talk to people? They're constantly texting or emailing back and forth. The <coughs> lack of social skills. You guys are very sharp, very bright, very good at your social skills, but there's another side of your generation that are not. What are your comments about that? Uh, I, I guess, and this is something we kind of outlined in our presentation also, but uh, of how a lot of people are, uh, I guess, unwilling to get a computer to kind of adapt to the technological increases that are coming. They're very reticent because, at least in the example of internet, they're they're, they're satisfied with data love because they've never experienced broadband or, they, or else they've lived their whole lives without it, so why, why, why do it? But at the same time, I think that, uh, especially post-industrial revolution, uh, the socializing, socializing changes. Um, I'm sure that when the telephone was first coming out, people said, well, why do I want to call them? Why can't I just walk to their house? Why can't we just go meet up somewhere and communicate? But, I mean, I, I do think you bring up a legitimate concern about uh, what are the consequences of uh, being raised by technology because, I mean, we are the first generation to, more or less, in some ways, be raised by screens. How will that play out in the long run? Um, but at the same time, I, I think I would say, I, I'd be optimistic and say that it, it wouldn't be, it's not appropriate to generalize and assume that everyone will always speak in next speak at all the time, where they say, OMG, I, G2G, and <laughs> stuff, stuff like that. But, um, no, I, mean, I, I, I do think that is a legitimate concern. And it's, it, this is certainly an interesting, uh, for lack of a better word, experiment. But I mean, I'm optimistic in the end that everything will work well, out. Well, the Pew study that I mentioned actually measured that, and they, they found, a, like with Homer, no significant variance in the amount of time spent physically with family and friends. And so I was surprised because I kind of well, shared. Well, shared with me the other day. She heard now there's websites that will read a bedtime story to children. So the parents can go in and go to a website to fire it up and leave the laptop next to the bed and go in the living room and watch Monday Night Football and the bedtime stories being read to their infant. Yeah, but my kid used to listen to the tapes of books. That's how he would fall asleep, too. So it wasn't at the expense of my spending time. It's just I didn't want to sit there for two hours. <laughs> I was going to say something. I was going to say something. Um, going back to kind of the like talking online and all that kind of stuff. I actually thought it would be really interesting to see what would happen if I'm like I'm a really big advocate for conversation. I love having conversations, but I thought that it might be interesting to see how it, how conversation differs if I was online. So I was sitting next to the person that I was I could have talked to, but we were talking via text message or via chatting. So like we were chatting right next to each other, sitting at each other, and it was really interesting to see how the chats change. And like when you're sitting next to somebody, they can't type LOL, and because you can see that they're not obviously laughing out loud, you know? They're like, oh, trying to fill an awkward silence with LOL, but I look at them like, you're not laughing, this isn't funny. And so I think that although sometimes the conversations via internet are really kind of dumb, but sometimes they're really important because, like, I have conversations with my friends that are in Fargo that are, I have conversations with my family. Like, my mom has Facebook, my grandma has Facebook, and I sit and I talk to them on Facebook because sometimes it's more productive for me to talk to them on Facebook because I can be multitasking. I can be talking to them on Facebook, and I can be doing research, and I can be doing something else all at the same time when if I had the phone in my hand, I couldn't type nearly as fast or I couldn't do something. So, like, I think for me, chatting and texting are just faster than calling. I just have one more caveat to add that at work we often complain about how our professors and bosses don't have appropriate internet social skills and that <laughs> they will take two weeks to respond to an email. And so we, <laughs> and that's a lot of our campus staff. 
And so we feel, as students, a lot like we might not be willing to talk to you, but we are constantly, I mean, if you email me, I'll get back to you within two hours, probably, if I'm on campus. And so I think what we lack in the ability to go talk to people, I think we, we go ahead sometimes in the fact that we're connected 24-7. And so if my professor sends me an email 30 minutes before class, as they can do sometimes, most 90% of the class will know that there's no class that day or to show up later, it's in a different classroom or something. So it's, it's a generational social skill, but I don't know if it's technically worse or better. It's just something that we both have to bridge the gap between, really. Um, I was just going to say um, that I think it's, so we've kind of outlined that it's different speaking online, speaking in text, than speaking in person um, or even over the phone. And I think it's it's a different, but we, um, we fill in the gaps. Like, you have to know somebody more to be able to read a text and understand what they're trying to say to you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. no, um, you don't have the physical or the, you don't have the physical cues, you don't have voice inflection. Mm -hmm. you, you have to put that into the text when you read it. At least I tried to. Do you guys ever look at your old text and not know what's going on because you don't have the context or the person's voice inflection to add on with it. Yeah, yeah. It you makes a big like, difference. Yeah, if you want to like look back at a text, you have to look at your text and then their text and then your text to know exactly what's being said. To be honest, actually, I, um, I've spoken a lot of my professors and just in class seminars, and a lot of professors have actually told the class that, you know, when you're emailing me, asking me a question about class, please be polite and not use proper grammar because they've been receiving a lot of emails from students that have been written as though it's been written from a text, and they're saying, you know, this is a school, it's, a, it's higher learning, it's, you know, so when you're emailing someone, especially potential employers and people who are actually emailing them, you know, with these putting Z's at the end or little LOLs or short forms and they don't, it's not very professional. And I know some professors who they've actually commented in class for people who've been typing and writing them emails about homework assignments and they've been using this language and they just don't think it's professional. I've experienced that with this. I have some younger people work for me um, in my session. <coughs> and just texting back with him, I've actually experienced the you instead of why you are. And, you know, I mean, it, you got to really watch yourself. I, I agree. Um, it's certainly much establishing the boundary between uh, the environment. Is it appropriate? Is it inappropriate? I mean, if I'm chatting to my friend, obviously, uh, we're probably going to use more slang. Uh, but I mean, if you're talking to an employer, you're going to be much more formal and much more appropriate to the situation. But I mean, I, I am sorry to say that uh, there, there are certainly some, you know, uh, some words are certainly going to slip into the lexicon. Sadly, I'm afraid IDK will probably be with us for a while. But, but it might be like the same terms that we were using in the 1950s and the 1980s where our children will mock us and say, oh, well, IDK, very <laughs> 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 Well, I, I, on that note, um,